Hey guys, we are graphing an equation with a square root symbol in it, okay? If you have been graphing parabolas or absolute value, this is gonna feel very familiar, but if you haven't, that's okay too, okay? So when we are graphing something with like this, whenever we are asked to graph something, we can always pick points for X, plug it in and get a Y, right? But that's not always the most efficient way to work, right? It can be time consuming, okay? So when graphing something like this, we have something we like to call a parent graph. Okay, so if I were just being asked to graph y equals the square root of x, this is what my graph would look like. Okay, now we have some other things happening to our graph, right? We're not just being asked to graph the square root of x. We've got a negative out front. We've got the minus 4 there and the plus 3 there. Okay, so it's going to be the same graph. It's just going to be changed a little bit, if that makes sense. Let me show you what I mean, okay? So this is the guide I use, okay? So first of all, A, if there is a number out front that is not one, um, it can either, <laughs> what's the word? Stretch or shrink my graph, okay? Um, stretch it or compress it, basically. And while this doesn't apply to this problem, I will link an example where it does. I just kind of want to show you super fast how that can affect my graph. So the blue one you see, that's the parent graph I just showed you, okay? The green you can see has a four out front and you see how that graph is stretched. And then the red one has a fraction out front, one fourth, and you can see how it's compressed, right? So that is what a number out front can do to your graph, okay? Now in this case, it's there's an invisible one, really, right? But we also have that negative which means my parent graph is going to be flipped, okay? So how this one goes up and over, since it's a negative, we're gonna go down and over, okay? And then these numbers here tell me where my starting point shifts to, okay? So first of all, I know because of this negative that I'm going to flip the parent graph, right? Okay, and then the H and K tell me where my new starting point is, okay? So on my parent graph, the starting point is zero, zero. Now this number here being added or subtracted under the square root tells me how far my graph shifts to the right or the left. And we're actually gonna do opposite of the sign. So negative four would usually make me think to the left four, but we're actually gonna go to the right four, okay? Shift our graph over. Now the one added or subtracted on the back tells you how much we're gonna shift up or down. Oh, I just dropped the pen or the marker on my shirt, sorry. How much it goes up or down and you stick with the sign on this one. So we're gonna go up three, okay? So my parent graph started at zero, zero. I'm going to go to the right four, one, two, three, four, and up three, one, two, three. So this is my new starting point, okay? And because of that negative, I know normally it would go up and over that way, but we're going to flip it and go down and over, okay? Now, some teachers at this point, they might just want to know that you know where the new starting point is and you know that it's flipped and goes over that way. They just want you to draw it as a good approximation and you're done, okay? If that's the case, if that's all your teacher wants, draw that line, you're good, like this video if it helped you and come back to it if you need more later. But some teachers might want you to graph a couple other points to give you a better idea of the shape of this graph, okay? So if that is the case, we're gonna plug in a couple points now, okay? Now, with square roots, there's a lot of numbers that don't have a pretty square root, right? Like the square root of three. Who wants to figure that out? It's not a pretty number, right? <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of remind myself of the nice, clean, easy square roots, okay? As I'm plugging these points in. So the square root of zero is zero, right? The square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three, right? So I'm just, other numbers between there have square roots. They're just big, long decimals, right? So we are just going to try and plug in numbers for X that give us these numbers to get nice square roots. But if you're like, I don't care, I will deal with ugly decimals, you pick whatever number you want. Okay. So I'm going to have my table over here to put, oh, to plug in points, okay? So I already know that if I were to plug in four, I would get three, right? And if you wanna double check that, you go ahead and do that. But if I plug in four, I'd get three. That one we already figured out using these guys, right? So I am now going to plug in five, 
and eight. Okay, so let's see what happens when I plug those in. I'm gonna grab a different color. So when I plug in five for X, I'm going to have Y equals the negative square root of five minus four, and then the plus three on the outside. I made that a little long, sorry. <laughs> so when I simplify that down, I get Y equals the negative square root of five minus four is one. Do you see why I picked five? There you go, plus three. And then we're gonna have Y equals the negative square root of one. So the square root of one is one, right? And then we have that negative there. So it's going to be negative one plus three. And then we have Y equals negative one plus three gives me two, okay? So when I plugged in five for X, I got two for Y. So let's go ahead and graph that point. So I've got over five and up two. Oh, wonderful. See how that's gonna start going down? Just like we knew it should because of that negative sign. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in one more point. We're gonna plug in eight. So I get Y equals the negative square root of X. We're plugging in eight minus four plus three on the outside, okay? I've got the negative square root of eight minus four is four. See why I picked eight plus three. And then I get Y equals the negative square root of four is two. And then I saw that negative there. So it's gonna be negative two plus three. So I get Y equals one, okay? So when I plugged in eight for X, I got one for Y. Now, as you get more and more familiar with these graphs, you might not even have to plug in points. You might just know where they go. but until then, we love tables, right? And plugging points in, it's our favorite thing, okay? So my graph is going to look a little something like that, okay? All right, hopefully this made sense. If you need some more graphing square root videos, I've got lots. I will link a playlist for you. Thanks.